Um, today I'm here to talk about the 635 East project and how it is federal construction what it's currently doing right. As opposed to the last video I made which was more critical of it. I will reiterate some of the points I made in the last video uh, that I made nine months ago. <laughs> so today we're here to talk about 635 East project because it lasts for 11 miles and it goes through three cities, Garland, Mesquite, and Dallas. It also includes two miles of I-30 and multiple streets uh, across during this uh, project, including Galloway Avenue twice, um, Gus Thomason, somewhat Northwest Drive, Oates Drive, La Parra Drive, Centerville, Northwest Highway, and Shiloh, Garland Avenue, McCree, Street to the Kingsley slash Walnut Hill, um, Plano, Miller slash Royal, uh, Skillman, Abrams, Forest Wing, and uh, Greenville Avenue. So the main goal of this project was to kind of improve traffic during this area because there was a lack of fudge roads, there was a lack of um, There's a lack of connectivity to certain uh, places because, you know, uh, on West Route 635, you couldn't access a Garland Road uh, through 635. You had to access it through um, taking Northwest Highway or Shiloh. You can't even access Shiloh through it, uh, 635, because there was lots of half and half exits going through the, the way because they didn't want uh, local roads in Garland and that kind of caused lots of problems because there's lots of places where the highway, the freeway goes over but you can't access it. Like for example on the Prada, um, if you go on, um, you can't take northbound 635 to get to the Prada and you can't, en you can't enter 635 from southbound, uh, you can't enter southbound 635 from the Prada and that caused lots of problems because people couldn't use uh, certain places and they were they had to depend on taking other roads to get to those places instead of using the freeway that is supposed to supposedly connect all of it and this project has been in planning for a long time it's been talked about since probably the early 2000s and it was also main majorly talked about uh, once they completed the LBJ Express project, which was from US 75 to a little bit west of I 35E. So that also meant that uh, that they want to improve um, traffic east of US 75 because that was also very backed up. And they're kind of going by what was built first in this case because that section west of US 75 was built first before that section east of US 75 and it's kind of what they're trying to improve and kind of make more concurrent to make sense and also the project's been going on for four years since 2020 um, it's made lots of improvements other things have been opened and the approach the project's taken has been more of a they want to work on the fudge roads first and start connecting the local streets before they start doing the main lanes you know the larger success was that because fudge roads were start being opened bit by bit in 2022 it's not completely open yet but we have more of a fuller picture now as the project uh, nears completion because they're building fudge on places that we ha haven't built before and they have to uh, build noise walls to uh, block out to stop people from uh, having to hear who live by the project area and um, and it's had six years to be established but as of now there's lots of new fronts open and once they uh, once they 
were working on for Jordan. They actually saw that it started once that stuff started getting completed. They started working on the mainland, and as of now, our new mainland has been opened from McCree Road to west of Greenville Avenue. And that's very, and that's very much more progress than I expected by now, to be honest, because it looked like they were just not going to open the mainland. It was just look especially on the east side 635 because it was looking very bleak and that's out of that out there and it's not close to complete yet but they're working on it and they're doing more yeah so 635 so 635 also has um, uh, many interchanges to um, most important Dallas roads, uh, one I'll focus on for now, right now going on first, is the Skillman Street one. The Skillman Street was placed as a pretty odd uh, type of curvature. Um, I can't say it that way, but the bridge is slanted. It's slanted, as you see here. The bridge is slanted, and um, it goes, and it also kind of stops uh, a lot going on in the area, because they want because the people of the neighbor of the Lake Highlands neighborhood wanted the bridge to be improved for a while and wanted the area to kind of be actually try to be made better. So for this bridge, they uh, uh, decided to not just make it in a regular style, which was just like, like you know, just two U-turns, two U-turn lanes, uh, three lanes, left turn, right turn. No, instead they made a new stick bridge that will light up at night, that will, um, that will have a special design and will be signature. Uh, this bridge is currently on construction because I will show uh, how it looks like as of now and how it will look like when it's completed in its whole configuration. As you can see, uh, it's getting close to complete because they've been working on it for a year and you can also see the temporary bridge which they built to accommodate traffic while they completely reconstruct the actual bridge and they've had to close uh, the westbound exit to Skillman Street and kind of close the first road off there so they can work and complete the bridge as they've been planning to do for years to make it a staple of the community and actually uh, make it look special. Uh, I think I'll now turn on my attention to all the other bridges in the project because mostly those have been completed the overpasses at uh, Greenville. Greenville is basically it's completely done. There's U-turn lanes open there. Uh, I think on top on both sides they've absolutely done an uh, exemplary job there. Uh, the ones at Abrams and Forest Lane are mostly half open, but the front roads are fully functioning, and those bridges probably will be open too because. The game stuff done on the second half of the bridge, and it's actually looking uh, pretty uh, good for that area. And also, uh, the overpasses in the scheme, both those bridges are half open, but they're not uh, complete yet. Because the second half of both those bridges are currently in construction and are currently being built. But the main thing that this project was aiming to improve was one of the oldest modern interchange, the oldest modern interchange in Texas, which was the I-31. Uh, currently, almost all the direct new direct connectors are open except for one, which is almost complete and probably should be open by next month. And uh, it also, it also, it's very um. It's al it's also very good that they're finally getting stuff done there because for a while it would have looked like stuff wouldn't have gotten done in those areas. But um, during the year 2024, especially, they ramped up. They they really started putting everything into the project because mass because things started mass opening in 2024, and they really started getting stuff done. Like for example, northbound direct connectors. Both of them were finished this year. Um, even from I-30, because from the exit, from I-32, northbound uh, 635, yeah, both those direct connectors were completed. 
they have to close up the I-35 road just to make sure they get those bridges over I over I-65 completed because you get those complete so you can get the front road done first and so 635 meetings are the last part of it that will be done uh, last uh, I don't worry and now that we're talking about Mesquite, uh, I'll talk about the Gus Thompson Road Bridge. So, Gus Thompson Road, let me just give a brief overview of this video. It's basically a bridge that goes, um, it was basically, originally, Gus Thompson went over I-30. But, it was rearranged, so I-30 goes over Gus Thompson. And this bridge is nearly complete. In the sense that half it's open, but the second half needs to be, uh, complete as they're working on it and they're starting to lay the groundwork for Gus Thompson uh, underpass to go under it and um, and and the closures lasted for a while one of the main points I criticized in the other video was that this closure was supposed to happen way earlier and uh, it was kind of meant to happened like in 2022 but happened like a year later which was kind of stalled me because it was originally supposed to happen like October 2022 but happened in August 2023 but you know the project did get delayed because of COVID, the pandemic, um, weather, snowstorms too and uh, the weather conditions were always very nice to the project because the weather was extreme but now that I've talked about um, think most of the things of this project, um, I'll, also have to, I'll, I'll, I'll conclude by talking about the express lanes. Because the whole project improvement is five lanes in each direction and one express lane in each direction. But what to do with the express lanes is uh, kind of special because they're going to use the express lanes to kind of connect to the direct connectors that leads you to I-30 and U.S. 75 respectfully because uh, they start work on the I-30 on the exit from the express lane to I-30 and the exit from the express lane to U.S. 75 and it kind of goes vice versa because the northbound 635 ramp for from I-30 will include an exit to the express lanes from I-30 and will and uh, and US 75 and the US 75 exit to eastbound 635 will include an exit to the express lane east of US 75. So they're using that to kind of connect everything. Um, they've done lots of good things for the front road, local access. And this project will be complete soon, and it seems like they're finally taking this seriously, which I am absolutely excited about because. I was like they weren't taking it seriously before, but drainage, relocation, is gonna stuff takes time. And the 635 is budget is definitely doing things right now because budget looks way more complete than it did back in the day. And it's looking very close to its uh, final configuration. And this budget is meant to kind of clear things up and uh, make the freeway better. So thank you for this video and the um, next video will be about the uh, Southern Gateway project and how two years later, how does it look now and has it actually improved traffic in that area.